Right, we're approaching May and still there's been absolutely no signs of Celtic launching any sort of season ticket campaign ahead of next season. You don't need to be a genius, I'm certainly not, to work out the main reasons for this. There is so much uncertainty at the club at the moment. Basically nothing is certain at all. We don't know who our next manager is going to be. We don't know what our squad is going to look like next year. We're coming off the back of a terrible season, the worst Celtic season in living memory. We have a fan base that are just massively turned off with the playing squad, the boardroom, the entire way the club has shown itself up this season. It really is no surprise that Celtic are stalling and stalling ahead of unveiling this season ticket proposal for fans to buy into for next season. Let's take a little look then into when Celtic have launched their season ticket campaigns over the last five years. Now, last year they did it at the earliest date in the last wee while. It was March the 9th, prior to all the COVID stuff rearing its head. The year before, we were looking at March the 22nd. In 2018, it was March the 30th. 2017 saw the 8th of April. And perhaps most tellingly, 2016 was May the 7th. Now, the latter there is the most telling because it's the last time the club were in a bit of a hole with real uncertainty over who the manager was going to be and the fans not exactly on board with what was happening at the club. It was when Ronnie Dyla left, Brendan Rodgers came in. Now, interestingly, when season tickets were launched in 2016, they actually went on sale a couple of weeks prior to Brendan Rodgers actually being appointed. So... Celtic do have form for doing this in the past. Not quite sure we'll see it the same way this time around. A couple of reasons for that. Back in 2016, we were still the champions as much as we'd just lost the Scottish Cup semi-final to Rangers and the balance of power was perhaps shifting a little bit in Glasgow. We were still the most dominant team in Scotland by a fair bit, I would suggest. Equally, Rangers were just coming up to the Premiership. So that was obviously something that could really entice fans into buying a season ticket the following year. You may not be surprised to learn that the pricing of the cheapest adult season ticket has grown over the last five years. Back in 2016, it cost £416 for the cheapest adult season ticket. Celtic cashed in on this buzz around the club the following year. Season ticket prices went up £50 to £466. The following year, they went up again around £15 to £481. They were 495 the following season. And this year, as we went for 10 in a row, they were £510. Now, Celtic surely can bump season tickets up any further this season, given that the team have been absolutely awful this season. It's been a shambolic tale and that fans haven't been able to see a minute of live football at Celtic Park for over £500. Now, I know the last part of that isn't Celtic's fault at all and it's not a problem that's exclusive to Celtic. Far from it, every other team in the country has been affected by COVID. Barely any fans have been able to see any football their team's played this season. It's not Celtic's fault but it's still a factor in season ticket campaigns next season. I think Celtic have no option but to freeze prices like they did after Ronnie Dyla's second season at the club. I think the club will probably frame this as being a real success. Fans will maybe lap it up a little bit as well, but the reality and the numbers suggest that fans will still be paying around £100 more for a season ticket next season than they were five years ago. Now, the picture with the pandemic does seem to be improving. Things are really looking up, and I think everyone is hopeful that fans will get back to Celtic Park very soon, certainly at the start of next season, we won't have any more closed door games. But as much as that is a positive picture, there are no guarantees at all. And this was summed up by the news last week announced by the SPFL that they have extended this deal they had with Sky Sports into the whole of next season. Now, the deal with Sky Sports means that all Premiership clubs can broadcast home matches 
to season ticket holders. It also means that Premiership clubs have the option to broadcast home matches that aren't on Sky Sports to anyone. Now, this pay-per-view idea hasn't been taken up by Celtic in general for whatever reason. That will no doubt stay the same next season. But it is interesting to note that the SPFL are still clearly a little bit concerned about the prospect of full houses next season because they've signed up this deal with Sky again. Now, this does also open up a bit of an interesting dilemma for some Celtic fans next season. Now, I'll just paint the picture for you. It's a cold December evening, a Wednesday night, let's just say, and Celtic are at home to, for argument's sake, let's say St Mirren. It's not a particularly huge game. Nothing's going to be won during the 90 minutes, apart from maybe, hopefully, three points for the home side. You've already got your pay-per-view package sorted for this game via your Celtic season ticket. Maybe you live far away, maybe you live over in Ireland or up north in Scotland or down in England. Are you going to travel to that game to watch 90 minutes on a cold Wednesday night at home to St Mirren? Or are you going to stay at home and watch that game on pay-per-view? Now, I'm not saying that will concern every supporter. I realise that so many people will have missed Celtic Park so much this season that they'll be keen to go to any game at the stadium next year. And like everything else that's been taken away from our lives in the last year, we'll try and not ever take stuff like that for granted again. But it is something the club need to be wary of. It's one of these consequences of the pandemic that we'll feel in every part of our lives and we don't really know what they are yet. It is an interesting one to weigh up and it's just another reason why Celtic can't afford to take the fans for granted next season. They can't afford to just assume that fans will be banging down the Celtic Park doors to get into the ground next season and the club can just count on that. The club need to come to the support in the next few weeks with a proposal. Give the fans something to buy into. Now, it may be as simple as bringing in another big-name manager. When Brendan Rodgers was appointed in 2016, he added on 10,000 Celtic season tickets overnight when he was appointed. Fans bought into the idea. They knew the club had gone big with the appointment, the highest-paid manager in Scottish football history. They pretty much knew that Big players would follow with recruitment, Moussa Dembele, Scott Sinclair, Colo Touri, etc. They knew the club had put an outlay into getting a big manager in and they wanted to buy into that. Now, that could happen again and I do think the managerial appointment is the largest factor that will convince fans to either renew or not to renew. But I do think that the club have to come to the support with more than just a managerial name. They have to have an open and transparent chat with the club's fans, something that hasn't been done over the last few years, and they need to come out with a vision for the future that fans can buy into. That's the key for me. I know I keep going on about it in this video, but there has to be something for the fans to buy into. This season, as much as it's turned out to be a disaster, this time last year there was something for the fans to buy into. It was 10 in a row. That was what we all wanted to achieve. It didn't happen. Next year, what is the the vision that the club want fans to buy into? And I'm not just talking some daft motto of, you know, let's get back our supremacy. We need ideas and we need action that the fans can get on side with. We've got an ideal opportunity to do it because we've we'll got a new chief executive who will formally start as his own man at the start of July We'll hopefully have a director of football. We surely will have a director of football as well as a manager. So there's an opportunity for Celtic to sell something to the support. And I really just hope they come out with a vision in the next few weeks to do that. Things can change very quickly. We feel really low as a support at the moment. There is nothing to get excited about with regards to Celtic. The team is on its last legs. It has been for the entirety of this season pretty much. There's no real figures at the club who seem to be really taking us on to the next level and keen to forge ahead. Everything just seems really stale at the club from the social media to the way the club train to the recruitment, the scouting. Everything seems really stale, but things can change very quickly. And I just hope that Celtic do this right over the next few weeks 
they get a key message out of supporters, they get the season ticket campaign out there and supporters will buy into it. Pretty much everything they've done this year has just been badly timed, badly worded, not reading the room with regards to how the support are feeling, just completely out of touch with the support and they really need to get a season ticket campaign right. I know Dominic Mackay isn't his own man yet at Celtic. I know he's very much shadowing Peter Lowell, I think, over the next couple of months. But it's a huge, huge time for Dominic Mackay. His entire time at the club could be set up in the next few weeks and it could either go really well or really badly. So that's what's ahead of us with regards to Celtic. What's ahead of us with regards to 67 Hail Hail are promising times as well as restrictions are continually lifted in Scotland. We will hopefully have more and more varied content to bring you on the channel. There are lots and lots of exciting things to look forward to. I'm finalising plans for what we're going to be able to bring you guys and girls next year. If you want to be part of that and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then please try and rectify that now. We're nearly at the end of the video, so if you just scroll down to the bottom right of your screen if you're watching on a laptop or desktop, subscribe from there. You can do it just as easily on a phone, a tablet, however else you would watch. It would be massively appreciated as we continue to boost the numbers. Thanks everyone, take care and heal, heal.